I was diagnosed with um, leukemia when I was 31. I had a little sinus infection. I could not shake the sinus infection for anything, so I went to the doctor a couple times. How many times did I go to the doctor, do you think? Maybe two or three. And they kept giving me, you know, medicine to take care of it, and I just could not shake this cold. He decided to get some blood work done. So we did routine blood work, got some blood work done, and I think he called us and said, I think you need to go to see this other doctor. And that was the first time I heard the word oncologist. I went to get, go back to see the doctor to um, get the results of the bone marrow biopsy. And he says it could be two things. It could be lymphoma or it could be leukemia. But we were still hoping it was just something simple. You know, yeah. and there's a million different things running through my head at that point. We were at his parents' house for dinner um, and I got a phone call and um, it was the local oncologist and he said the results came back and he has acute leukemia. He said you have to take him to Penn, um, you have to go to the ER, we need to start treatment right away. And after that we just hung up the phone and called our family and yeah, I remember. got in the car and drove to Penn. Our doctor wanted to, to possibly do a little bit more of an aggressive approach towards it. So she offered, you know, some chemotherapy and then go right to a, a stem cell transplant. And I, didn't, I had no idea what stem cell transplant was. I'm thinking, uh, is that from somebody else? But it ended up being that they would, would they extract uh, stem cells from me, clean all the cancer out of me with all the chemotherapy, then inject my cells back in, kind of with the hope that nothing's hiding back in them. Mm -hmm. And I learned that during the whole process that these cancer cells just hide everywhere. And if you don't get them all, they come back. He stayed in remission after the stem cell transplant for one year, and then he had relapsed. I remember going to the doctor and getting another blood test, and as soon as the doctor walked in, it was, it's back. They tested my family, and they tested, you know, they put my name into the donor registry, and then it's a waiting game. Um, it could happen quick, it could take, you could never find a match. When I heard that I found out there, there was a match for me, I was excited, but I was also extremely nervous because I knew that it was time to start the whole procedure, but I knew that I had to do this to get at least any attempt to get better. I wanted to be back for my family, I wanted to be back for me, I wanted to beat this horrendous, disgusting disease. And um, so regardless of what lie ahead, I was going to proceed with it. Penn treated my cancer through the whole three-year process, I believe, like I was the only patient in the entire hospital. There was always somebody there to answer a question for you, always somebody there to um, lift, like I said, lift your spirits up, the whole staff from Penn, telling you the same thing. When we cure you, I remember those words, when we cure you, then we'll, we'll explain the next step. That was, I just remember that being huge. It was like that mental edge that kind of got you past everything. Without Penn, I, I don't think I'd be sitting here talking to you right now. I have been cancer free for, has it been five years now? Or six yeah, years since next? March of 2009. March of 2009. So he hasn't had any relapse after the bone marrow transplant. I feel blessed. I feel, I feel absolutely happy. I feel like a family again. One of the things that I lost when I was go undergoing treatment was time with my children and my family. So the fact that I have the opportunity to be with them now is just an amazing, amazing blessing. Um, and it's also great because now I get to give back. I get, I get to, to talk to people about um, being newly diagnosed. I get to reach out to them and give them what the experiences that I experienced, give them some advice. Number one is never give up and find a great support team, find a great team of doctors like I did at the Abramson Cancer Center. It is hard. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you, the treatment's hard, the emotions are, are hard, you're going to struggle, you're going to feel sick, um, but it will pass, and you have a long life to live after that. You can, you can beat this, you can survive, you can become a survivor. The cure is within.